So we're working on our problem. I'm going to show you that with the product rule, yes, there are other ways to do it, but ultimately we need the product rule because I think I showed you last time that we're going to have to have that if we have any sort of exponent here or here, we're going to need it because you certainly don't want to distribute that out 30 times if that's your exponent. That would be crazy. So how do we do this two ways? Well, way number one is what if we don't even consider it to be a, a product at the very end? What if we distribute those parentheses and make it so we just have a basic polynomial in this case. Well, if we do that, we'll get 3x to the 6th plus 2x to the 3rd minus 3x to the 4th minus 2x. Are you okay with that so far? Check for any like terms. Do I have any like terms? So maybe reorganize it just a little bit because that's the way we like to see our polynomials. And then the question is, can you take a derivative of that thing right there? Yeah, that's actually pretty easy. So if we do dy dx, what's the derivative of, of this, this polynomial? Can you all tell me real quick? Thank you, all of you. Appreciate it. Let's all try this. Uh, what's the derivative of 3x to the 6? Okay, minus what? 12x to the 3rd. Then? Six, 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 six. Uh -huh. Is that it? Okay, so that's our derivative. Now, the product rule should give us the same thing. And again, we're practicing the product rule in case I give you something like that, where you can't just distribute it. You'd have to distribute this one and then distribute it. That would be very annoying. So we're going to verify with a couple of these examples that, yeah, you are going to get the same thing if you use the product rule. Do you remember what the product rule said to do? Derivative of the first one. First one? Times the second one. Sure. Add the derivative of the second one plus the first one. Yeah, that's very good. So there, I think the book has it in a slightly different order, but because of the commutativity of addition and multiplication, it really doesn't matter. As long as you take the derivative of one times the other plus the other one times the derivative, uh, of, like the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Or any way you, you kind of permute that, that's, that's fine. Take the derivative of one of them times the other then multiply times that one times the derivative of the other. In other words, for us, we'd say the derivative <laughs> of the first function times the second function. So that's our, our separation of the product there. plus the first function times the derivative of the second. So derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's how we like to say that. That's like how we like to see that. Are you guys okay on how this is coming about? Again, we can't just take the derivative of this and this and this and this. That doesn't work. Anytime we have a product there, we have to use a product rule or we have to distribute and do it term by term. So far so good? Can you all tell me what's the derivative of x squared minus 1? What are we going to get out of that? So this will be our 2x times 3x to the fourth plus 2x. Plus, do we take the derivative of this? This piece right here, folks. No. Okay, so x squared minus 1. Derivative of this. Can you take the derivative of that? 12x to the third. Okay. Plus 2. Plus 2. Cool. Notice how you follow the ddx. That ddx tells you what you're taking the derivative of. It says the ddx of this, yeah, but not that one. Not this one, but yes, this one. So follow the DDX, you'll say take the derivative of this little piece. If you can do that for these rules, it will really, really help you out. But you're going to feel okay getting down that far. Now, is this the same as that? If we distribute it, it should be, though. Let's find out. Here we'll get our 6x to the fifth plus 4x squared. Plus, we're going to have to foil that, right? Okay. Don't worry, we're not done. Like, wait a second. Oh, no. 
Oh, no, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> if we FOIL this, distribute it, we're going to get 12x to the fifth plus 2x squared minus 12x cubed minus 2. Well, at least I see the minus 2. That's fine. You guys okay with the distribution? Just some basic algebra here. Now, if we do combine some like terms, I see a 18x to the fifth. Cool. I see a 12x to the third, a minus 12x to the third. Gotcha. I see a 6x squared. I have minus 2. I have minus 2. Now, say we wanted to find the second or third derivative, can we just use that polynomial from that point? Oh, sure. Yeah, find the second one. Bam. Just Look, at these are the same derivative, right? Right. It is the same. This is just a different way to go about it. Of course, you, uh, like I said before, could you distribute that and do it this way? Absolutely. For this one, that might be the easier way to go about it. It's, it's a project rule with just one parenthesis, but as soon as you have some exponents, everything changes. And you definitely don't want to do this if there's some exponents associated. So keep in mind, we're building up to things, okay? We're not there yet. We're building up to things. I'm giving you kind of like the, the groundwork for the stuff we're doing later. So yeah, you need to understand the product rule before we get to something that's called the chain rule. Because then you're going to be using the product rule in, in combination with that thing. And in combination with the quotient rule. And in combination with these other ideas. So you do have to understand it. But I'm showing you right now that they, they are the same. Uh, it's just a different way to go about it. Do you guys understand the idea there? Also, have you read through the book, The Proof of This? The proof's in there. It's actually not a hard proof. There's just one little thing that they do. Uh, they add on an expression that equals zero so they can factor it. And you can prove that the, the product rule works really well, uh, sorry, really easily uh, with that. So read through that if you haven't done that already. That's in this section. Read through the proof of the product rule and the quotient rule. It's not too hard to follow. Uh, I promise it's not too bad. Read through that. Would you like to try a couple more? Let's do one more with the, uh, the product rule. I'll give you an example of how some of the problems in your, in your book are going to look. That way you can kind of have a, a, a bearing to go forward with that. Then we'll talk about the quotient rule, and that'll wrap up our day today. So the last example of just a straightforward product rule. It, it's not too bad. All it is is you have to remember uh, what, the, what this, this does. A derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Remember that. Uh, be able to identify what products are, and then you're good to go. By the way, did I show you last time why we don't have to use the product rule for something like this? Just that term? Yeah. Even though it's being multiplied, did I show you that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Because when they do the product rule with that, the derivative of the constant goes to zero, and that piece falls out of the, the expression. Okay. Let's do that. 1 plus x squared, and then x squared. Firstly, you need to be able to see that this is in fact a product. Do you see it's a product? What we mean by a product is not just like this, okay? This <coughs> wouldn't be considered a product rule. Explain the difference between something like this and something like this. When I say product rule, I don't mean What's different between here and here? That's what is it? Constant. The constant, okay, even this. This wouldn't be a product rule. Exponents. Not exponents. Not just exponents. Grouped terms. Though these are grouped terms. So you have two different groups of terms with the square root. Okay, different terms that involve what? Constants or variables? Variable. Okay, product rule means we're multiplying variables. Okay, expressions that have variables in them. So this, do you need a product rule for that? No, no. That's just a constant. You could actually pull that outside of your whole derivative. Uh, the derivative of this thing is going to be 1 times 3. That's what it's going to be. Okay, derivative of x is 1. Derivative of 2 is 0. 1 times 3 would be 3. That would be the derivative. Right? So you get that even if you distributed the 3. That'd be fine. So we're not talking about products of constants times things. We're talking about products of functions in terms of x times functions in terms of x. Are you with me on this? Which is why we don't have to use the product rule when you find the derivative of that piece. That's just a constant times something. We're talking about functions of x times functions of x. You need to see the difference. Are you okay on the difference in that? You sure? 
So do we have a, a function in terms of x times a function in terms of x on that problem up there? Yeah, yeah. yeah in fact, this is it right there. <laughs> Let me erase that 3. We don't need that. Let's go ahead and let's try to set up the product rule. Now, could you distribute it and do the work that way? Of course. Yeah, of course you could. You could distribute this. It would be square root of x plus... Uh, x, squared, x squared square root of x. You would have to combine some some exponents there, but then you could take a derivative. Not too bad. Maybe I'll show you that in just a minute. If we do the product rule, however, why don't you guys figure out how to write out the product rule? Set up the ddx of the first expression times the second, plus the first expression times ddx of the second. I want to see that on your paper. I want to see the work. I don't want to see just the answer, okay? At this point, you're learning this stuff. So I want to see every step. I want to see it written out just the way I've showed you. So derivative of the, of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. After that, the calculus is done. Then you just got to do some algebra. So first I want to see if you have it set up right. Let's see. Check your paper. What you have is the derivative of the first times the second function in terms of x. Do you guys all have that? Okay. Then we have what? A plus or a minus between them? It's always a plus. Plus product. Product plus. Plus what comes next? Do I need parentheses around that? Yeah. I've told you how important parentheses are for this, right? Parentheses being multiplied by something that's important stuff. So have that times the derivative of the second expression. Show of hands, how many people made it that far? Great. If you made it that far, you understand the product rule. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. We have that down. Now we just have to follow the ddx. The ddx is the calculus for us, right? That's the derivative at this point. So if you just follow that little piece, take a derivative piece by piece, you'll have the right answer. So understanding product rule, great. Then just do the ddx, okay. They're all going to be kind of basic derivatives that we've seen before. It's just applying them together within the context of a quotient or a rule or a product rule or we'll find out later a chain rule. Derivative of 1 plus x squared. What does this give you, please? Great. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of x squared is 2x times the square root of x. Plus, do I take the derivative of this? No. Okay, so 1 plus x squared, I'll leave it in parentheses, times, oh, derivative of the square root of x. Might want to change that, huh? So if we did, I'll write the extra step so you can see it. We do, yeah, x to the 1 half. If we take that derivative, that's one half x to the negative one half. Did you get one half x to the negative one half? Mm -hmm. Cool deal. All right. Very good. Now, making